Hi guys, this is Steve Strickland with Camtech Engineering, and today for Mastercam Monday, I'm going to cover the selection bar. Now, the selection bar is that set of utilities that allow you to quickly pivot between different selection methods and modes based on the type of geometry that you're using. So as always, if you have any questions about what I cover today, please don't hesitate in reaching out. I'd be happy to help. So let's go ahead and dig in. All right, so jumping directly into the selection bar. Before we do, I want to outline kind of what we're looking at here. We have a solid model. We have a silhouette boundary of that solid model, and I've drawn in a few points here and a couple circles that will allow us to better showcase the functionality of the selection bar that's up here at the top of the graphics window. Now, a couple of things that are new within Mastercam 2020, this gear icon here in previous versions, this was called the auto cursor settings. Now it's been renamed to the selection settings. If I click that, I have the ability to enable or enable certain elements. I also have a tangency tolerance value down here at the bottom. And so what this is, the larger this value is that you input is basically telling Mastercam to open up the aperture, so to speak, when considering neighboring entities as tangent. Uh, you can also get to all of these settings um, through obviously through the gear icon here or through file system configuration and there is a selection method down here so same settings just two ways to get there uh, another item that's new within mastercam 2020 is the ability to place points at a face center and so to do that i'm going to go over here to levels and turn off my wireframe make it a little bit easier to see this and go over here and place a point and in my auto cursor i'm going to say give me the face center let's go ahead and lock that and now, if I, as I hover over, you'll see it's starting to want to place, wherever I click on this face, it's going to place the point at the face center. So there we go. We got our point. So we're going to go ahead and say OK. All good there. And so now let's go ahead and take a, take a look, deeper look at the functionality in the selection bar. All right, so I'm going to quickly go through the functionality or the, the top level functionality here of the selection bar at the top of your graphics window. Um, first thing I'm going to note here is the auto cursor configurability uh, is not really selectable unless you're in a function that permits it. So right now, I'm not in a function. I cannot change the way my auto cursor is going to behave. But if I'm in a line endpoint or a point or any of the functionality up here, I can go in and I can change the way I'm going to select my first endpoint. So if I select arc centers, as I hover over, you can see it's setting me a snap two point at the center of these arcs. So now my first point set, I can go up here to auto cursor and do the same thing, arc center. And now my endpoints, there again are being, it's setting me a snap two points that are the center of these circles. If I go out here, I can do the same thing with uh, the midpoint of line segments. I go down here and select midpoint. And let's see, let's zoom in here a little bit. And now as I hover over this line segment, it gives me a snap two point that's at the midpoint. Same thing here as I hover over. Let's find a line segment here. So as I hover over, there we go. And it's giving me the midpoint of this line segment. I snap to. So this can be very useful um, in certain operations, certain functionality. It, it, it streamlines your clicks, minimizes your clicks, so to speak. So continuing down the selection bar here, the next item I want to talk about is the selection method. And so right now auto is set. So auto allows me to select single points. I can select a uh, wireframe. I can hold shift and select the entire chain. I can do the same thing here. I can select the solid model. But if I want to be more specific and more narrowly focused, I know what I'm hunting for, I can select chain. And now with chain selected, I can with a single click select these chains. So that can be very useful at times. Um, I also can go in here to Polygon. And now Polygon allows me to kind of freeform my bounding box. And so an element like this piece of wireframe here, if I was trying to select that, might be difficult to get within the box. Well, with Polygon selection, I can now kind of freeform my way around it to get it within the box. And I double click and now I have that item selected where I can manipulate it. And continuing right along, the next thing I'm going to look at here is selection mode. 
And so right now I'm defaulted to um, inside my bounding box. And so anything that I select that's inside my bounding box will be selected. Uh, here, pretty, pretty straightforward stuff. Um, I can select the entire thing and whatever's inside my bounding box will be selected. Uh, I also can select anything that's outside of my bounding box. So now if I just get these, the circle and the point, then everything else, you can clearly see the model and the rest of the silhouette boundary and all that good stuff is now selected. If I go to N plus, this is gonna be everything that's inside of my box or intersecting my box. So if I select this, so you can see these were clearly inside my box, but then you had some intersection points here. These, these uh, segments were intersecting, that's why they're selected. Same principle here with outside plus. Anything outside my box or intersecting will be selected. There you go. Now the final point here is going to be intersection. So this is anything that's intersecting with the box will be selected. So go here and there again, just those line segments or those solid elements that were intersecting my box are selected. This is gonna close out our Mastercam Monday on the selection bar. I thank you for tuning in and please tune in every Monday as we walk through the Mastercam 2020 release, different Mastercam tips and tricks, as well as tech support cases we are encountering in the office. So thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next week.